Welcome back to the Solo Promoter YouTube channel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And a big thank you to all the Patreon patrons who have uh, uh, signed up to help make the videos on this channel possible. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I have these Future Shock uh, CWF sets uh, that I purchased from Phil Singer Games. And I have a lot of, I have some of the cards from the uh, Promoter Prime. I don't think, I think there's one set I don't have of these uh, that I haven't ordered yet. Uh, and then I have a couple of the con exclusive cards. But um, I really haven't dug into these much at all. Uh, and uh, what I thought we could do here is um, I, I want to get these into plastic sleeves. Uh, and so I have a bunch of plastic sleeves over here. So I thought uh, we could just go through uh, the sets and we could just look at the cards. And as I said, I've, I've kind of thumbed through them quickly, but never um, fully. And I, I actually truthfully have uh, not read the books uh, yet. But um, I just thought we could take a look through the cards and maybe uh, we'll pick one or two interesting characters as we're going through here to... Uh, uh, maybe play a match at the end. So uh, here is Agony. I love the I love the look of this character um, from Parts Unknown. Uh, Eternal Suffering. He's got a roll finisher. Uh, rolls one of two. The opponent moves out of p uh, position, uh, but he hits an elbow drop instead, and then three to six. That is the finisher rating. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. The opponent must have a negative three power to throw. Agony into the ropes and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but that's a strong looking card coming off the top. Uh, and then who do we have here? Tortured Soul. Um, so yeah, one of the, the things about uh, CWF that's just, it's kind of not for me is like sort of this alternate universe thing. Um, I know that, uh, let's see, how is it? Let's go this way. Um, I know a lot of people love the alternate universe uh, stuff, and uh, I certainly see the appeal to tell new stories with, um, uh, you know, previously created characters. But uh, to me, that just, it just doesn't, uh, I don't know. It's not interesting to me. Um, but, uh, I mean, the artwork here is a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, there's certainly some interesting uh, new characters as well. Uh, so there's Total Anarchy. Like even even in the Marvel universe, it's like okay, here's a here's an alternate version of this guy. Okay, all right, okay, we get it. Here's so here's Lord Nexus, um, popular character now in at twenty one thirty nine with his new card. Um, I like the reflection on his glasses. That's uh, fun. Um, just see the reflection of total anarchy in his glasses. Um, Little bit of a stronger card than his current GWF card. Uh, Saboteur. Centauri, Cosmic Big Bang, is his finisher. Again, I don't know, uh, as I said, I, I have not read these books, so I do not know a lot about these characters. Uh, but sort of like an Incubus bloodline thing going on here, Nebula, uh, with Nebula and Centauri. Adam Blast. is his uh, Adam's Atomic Drop. Sort of a little tribute to Sam's Atomic Drop there. Lance Atlas, Central Leg Sweep, and the Mars Manhandler Finishers. Revolver, uh, figure four leg lock, ooh, plus three finisher, that's... Uh, Pretty powerful, and he's got a 4-1 finisher, so pretty strong there. Doomsayer. Uh, 
Uh, talking about multiple universes, I did like the Future Shock uh, GWF set. I liked the first one, uh, but then when it kind of continued, uh, I was very glad that uh, that all those characters kind of left and they went to to this uh, federation. Here's Evolution, um, Decapitator, and uh, he's got a 5-2 pin. from Aethra, so a gladiator, or at least an Aethran. Maybe not a gladiator. Mr. Sentra. Uh, Vector 1 Verve is his finish, and then he's got a 5-2 finish rating. And then we have the cover card, Oracle. Uh, I was not a, a huge fan of Oracle in the GWF. He did okay. He didn't, he never just, he was sort of just unremarkable, really. Uh, so there is the Future Shock uh, Centra, Centra Wrestling Federation set. And so far out of these, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to set aside, I like Revolver. Revolver looks interesting, uh, but I like uh, Agony. So I'm going to, I'm not saying those are the, the two that are going to have the match. I'm just saying that those are two that I'm setting aside for right now. All right, uh, let's look at Future Shock Central Wrestling Federation 2116 and uh, see these cards and get them into sleeves. Uh, so we've got Rundar, totally ravaged as his finisher, 6-3, pin rating. Uh, this set came out in 2020. That's what it's... That's the copyright date on the front, uh, anyway. It's Paganax. Paganax uh, is one of my all-time favorite GWF characters. Uh, Pagan Void plus four. Uh, four one pin. Might set him aside. Uh, Prince of the Rose. Sort of a alt version of Avarice there. Uh, not in line and a 5-2 uh, is his pin rating. This is Warfare. Uh, Shelling, Counter-Strike, and he's got a 7-4. Uh, so sort of a low pin rating there for Warfare. Conduit. Uh, Psyops is his finisher, and he's got a 6-3. In single matches, substitute with Flying Body Press. In single matches, substitute with uh, Centra Spine Buster. So a, a tag expert there. Perhaps tagging with General Aegis. I don't know. Uh, again, have not read the book. Final Salvo. He's got a 4-1, so another super strong... Uh, card there, just in terms of, of that. Uh, here is Oppressor. Uh, his finisher is Suppression, and his pin rating is a 5-2. Uh, suppression is a plus three. Sorry, I'll read the finisher ratings. Realize I should probably be doing that as we're looking through these. Uh, this is Char. He's got two Smothered in Ashes finishers, and uh, at, both at a zero rating, and then he's got a 6-3. Six, 6-3 three. Six, three pin rating. It looks like uh, Oppressor... Char, and this gentleman, who is Tech, uh, are all some sort of team. Uh, Spike Pile Driver plus three. He's got a five-two rating. Uh, just because they're all, I say they're a team because they're all kind of wearing the same clothes. But maybe they're not. I don't know. I have not read the book. And then we have Evolution, highly evolved. Uh, total disaster, so maybe he's 
this universe's uh, disaster. I don't know. He's got a 5-2 rating. The highly evolved is a roll finisher, and it's just roll one die. That is the finisher rating, so could has the potential of being a, a very big roll there. And then Murdoch, uh, Head Spear Takedown, roll one die, one, roll again on level one offense, two to five, this is the finisher rating, six, Murdoch misses and the opponent takes over on level three offense, he's got a five, two. I will say that that original, wasn't it the original Murdoch drawing, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, was done by Chuck Carter, I love that drawing, I, I, I just thought, I just remember it in black and white, uh, just a really fantastic, I've always loved, Chuck Carter can do no wrong, uh, in my eyes, in terms of artwork, so, I just remember that drawing as being so awesome, I could be misremembering, I'm pretty sure Chuck Carter did a version of Murdoch, because it was like a big thing that Chuck Carter was coming back, I'm gonna put Murdoch in this pile as well, um, to check it out, now, uh, before we get to 2117, um, I believe these are all Promoter Prime. Oh, that's Promoter Prime 2023. But the rest of these, oh, Promoter Prime 2021. Okay. So, um, let's see. That's 2020. These are 2021. So we'll keep those with those guys. And we'll keep these over here. Um, but here we go, Future Shock, Shock. here is Hero, uh, he's got a Mechatoid Bomb, plus two, it's a tag finisher, um, but then it's a plus one as a singles finisher, he's got a five two, uh, just sort of an average looking guy there, uh, oh, this is, uh, Promoter Prime 2119 too, so, uh, we're going back in time, this is a Zealous, And Zealous has a Zealous Breaker plus two. If Zealous wins using this hold, roll two dice. On rolls of doubles, Zealous refuses to release the hold. The referee reverses the decision and the opponent is injured for two fight cards. He's got a 6-3 rating. Uh, here is Grovel. Uh, Grovel, no finisher, <laughs> just two add ones, uh, and he's got a 7-4 pin rating. Oop, I gotta open another stack of cards. Uh, these are the card sleeves I use, four by six top loaders. Um, I order them usually from Ultra Pro's website. They'll have sales every once in a while, and I'll just pick up a bunch. There's 25 in a pack. There are other 4x6 top loaders out there, but if you want them to fit your Filsinger Games cards, make it Ultra Pro. This is not sponsored by Ultra Pro. This is not, uh, uh, I'm I not getting any sort of brand deal or anything. It's just the facts. If you, uh, I know there's like, what is it? I don't know. There's uh, one other brand that people buy a lot because they're cheaper, but they just, these cards don't fit. Uh, so there you go. There's Grovel. We'll get Grovel in the sleeve there. And here's a uh, Cringe. Primus Attack plus one tag becomes Primus Attack zero in singles matches. It's got a 6-3. So maybe a, a tag team partner there for Grovel, possibly. All right, this guy looks like he's a tag team partner. Uh, they both do uh, for a uh, hero because they're all wearing the same things there. Uh, I'm kind of getting the idea with the with sort of the trio in the last pack and the trios here. Maybe there's some sort of trios things going on. I'm not a huge fan of trios matches. Um, just, yeah, I just never got into it. Uh, every once in a while, like I like sort of Survivor Series matches where it's five on five and there's elimination, but just sort of the six-man tag trios thing uh, never uh, never clicked with me. Uh, he's got a Moonlock, um, and uh, he's got a 6-3 rating. He's got double Moonlocks there. Um, and then Hero, and then the last one here is Samuel. 
Uh, Centra Spine Buster, the big slam, uh, plus one. He's got a 6-3 rating. I believe in the 2118 set, he might have an upgrade. If I'm remembering my Filsinger Games teasers. Uh, do these all... Wish we could. Someday we're gonna get rid of those white borders and we'll have cards that truly connect and it's going to be wonderful. All right, uh, so let's see. Here is our next uh, set, 2117. So this is Urchin. He's got an Exploder Suplex plus one. He's got a 6-3 rating. He is from Centropolis Centra Prime. Sort of has a Moondog, uh, Moondog spot going uh, thing going on there. Or appearance. I have no idea if that's uh, his thing. Here is a Calamity. And Calamity has Misfortune's Misery plus two, and he's got a 5-2 uh, rating. Kind of like that. He's a, he's a contender for maybe getting a match here at the end. Uh, here is Epitome, the Hype Man. Um, and so this is sort of a, a companion card to this Epitope, Epitome and Paragon uh, Promoter Prime card. In fact, it's just pretty much the same artwork. Uh, we're just seeing different views here. Uh, but Epitome has loud and clear. It's a plus four tag. Uh, in singles matches, substitute with clear my throat, plus one, uh, seven, four. What I find interesting on this is, I mean, I haven't read the story, is he seems to be a hype man for uh, Paragon, uh, but he doesn't have a distractor rating. Um, so it, I don't know, just find that interesting because he's sort of like, sort of given the appearance of a manager. Uh, Paragon, the big time, plus three, uh, pin four one. So definitely a heavy hitter there uh, with that finisher and that pin rating. Uh, here is Dr uh, Dransack. Uh, he's got two finishers, the long view. Uh, well, I mean two. The long view's on there twice. It's a zero finisher. 5-2. So, decent card there. Here we have Ventros. Uh, Ventros has the Neuron Bomb, plus two, it's a, and he's got a 6-3 pin rating. Gladiator, yes, this is Rumble. He's got Lightning Strike, plus one, Decapitator, plus two, and he's got a 5-2 pin rating. And it looks like, oh, here we have Overkill. I don't know if there's, uh, well, we're kind of getting into the trios thing. <laughs> it looks again. Uh, let me put Rumble in a sleeve here. 5-2, two, two finishers, pretty strong card. Overkill, uh, ultimate decapitator, tag move, and singles matches substitute with flatline, plus two. Uh, and he has a 6-3 rating. Here is Malice, Malicious Intent, plus four. Roll one die on rolls of one, Malice misses. Opponent takes over on level three offense. On rolls of two to six, play normally. Oh, so I guess you just use the finisher rating. Uh, five, two, finisher rating there. And these cards connect uh anti-atom 
Uh, full charge tag. It's a plus two finisher. In single matches, substitute with slingshot suplex three. In singles matches, substitute with negative charge zero. In single matches without Adam present, substitute with down three over here. So what happened to uh, Adam Bless? He must have something, something happened, obviously. Uh, there's anti-Adam. And then here's just Adam. He's got a positive charge. So it's kind of like a, a take on, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on their names. The, the, the early, early tag team. Uh, oh my God, I'm old. Don't get old people and don't get COVID and get brain fog. Um, you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to tell you, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, and I'm sure you're typing it into the comments right now. Um, he's got a positive charge plus three. It matches without anti atom presence. Substitute with positive charge plus one. He's got a six three power rating or uh, pin rating. Uh, here's the epitome and paragon hype card. Epitome likes to come out with paragon before their matches to get the crowd going. Use this before any match where you feel the opponents wouldn't sit back and listen to epitome's introduction speech. Roll two dice. Uh, so they can be banished by the uh, uh, ambushed by the opponent. The opponent enraged by Epitome's comments starts off on fire and rolls on level two offense. Uh, the opponent loses his cool and walks right into a running elbow from Paragon. The opponent responds by trying a frontal assault on Paragon, but immediately regrets it when Paragon nails him with a big man slam. And uh, Epitome has barely begun when the opponent attempts to sneak up on Epitome and Paragon. But Paragon sees him coming and hits him with the big time plus three. Opponent rolls his pin plus finisher rating. Uh, so that is the hype card there. And here we got uh, Voterist. So it looks like these two cards fit together. Voterist and Partide. Uh, let's see. Face Your Future Tag Finisher. Total Devotion Tag Finisher. And these are Oracle's followers. Uh, it just says Oracle's following as where they're from. Uh, Face Your Future Total Devotion. 6-3 uh, rating over here. 7-4 over here. Uh, so interesting tag team to be sure. Um, and again, I do not have um, I do not have 2118, uh, but I do have, as you saw in a recent video, uh, some of the um, promoter prime cards for this year. So Lord Nexus Jr. Um, Little Lord. No, that would be the <laughs> midget version. Uh, Darkest Justice it has a distractor rating of 7 Rod of Injustice plus 4 it's a disqualification and he's got a 5-2 I realize we didn't look at Lord Nexus's Jr. has got a Flying Titan and the Apex plus 2 and he's got a 5-2 rating so uh, Lord Nexus Jr. be a, a strong contender there and then the final card here is we have Rundar. Uh, Rundar, totally ravaged, uh, plus two. Um, use bold stats against other Ravengers. So when he's facing other Ravenger, Ravengers, he gets a little bit of a boost. He's got a 5-2 uh, pin rating. And there you go. And then of course I have the con exclusive cards, uh, Trisis Time and the Centro Palladium. Um, and there you go. So there is uh, just a, a look through of the CWF Future Shock cards that I have. I'm missing the most recent set. Um, and obviously I don't have the, um, uh, I don't have the, the cards that were GWF cards uh, that were part of that set. I mean, I have them, but I don't have them out here for you to see. 
so yeah, interesting to take a look at those. Uh, I guess we could play out two matches here. Let's put, I'm gonna put these two beasts together and I'm gonna save this for the second match. Um, these could totally be uh, two partners I'm putting up against each other because uh, I haven't read the storylines yet, um, but uh, I think this will be fun. So we've got uh, Agony, uh, who's got an 8-5, so he's not going to be uh, pretty great, but uh, Murdoch will be able to whip him into the ropes and stuff, and Murdoch has a plus, or has a 5-2. So Murdoch will be red, Agony will be blue, and Agony is going to start things off uh, with a shoulder chop, 1-4. Murdoch reverses it. Uh, body slam two, one dazed one, uh, five into the ropes. Um, and let's see, his ropes running is a C. Opponent has to have a negative three power, uh, which he does. So into the ropes, uh, again, he's got a C. The roll is a 10, so big move. Opponent rolls on level three offense. Murdoch rolls the six, head spear takedown. So we roll one die. And it's a one, so we roll again on level three offense. He misses that head spear takedown. Five, Sentra takeover. Three, uh, four, Agony is going to roll out of the ring. He's got an A rating. And he rolls low, rolls a three. He's going to win that brawl on the outside. Come back in and toss Murdoch right out. Murdoch has an A rating. Six, seven, eight. Uh, opponent rolls on level three offense. Agony is still in control. Uh, press slam choice G. So that'll either be a death jump. Um, yep, he's going to go for the death jump because Murdoch has a C. And uh, that is a C10. Uh, so Murdoch's going to roll his pin. Agony comes off the top. Uh, target is two. Roll an eight. Agony. Uh, follows with a demonic power slam. Three, add one. Murdoch rolling his pin. The target four. Uh, the roll, an 11. So a kick out there, but there's another demonic power slam. Adding one, four, hurts two. Uh, into the turnbuckle. Now Agony's going to roll up instead. Uh, just starts choking Murdoch. Hurts two. Uh, backbreaker, choice D. Um, so let's see. It's a, so he would need a five or less to make that power move work. Uh, he's going to play it safe. Go for the agility. This will work on an 11 or less. Ooh, just gets the 11. Murdoch hurts two. Um, clothesline two, an agility move. Murdoch has the agility. Hits a power bomb. Three hurts two. Another Murdoch power bomb. Dazing agony. Uh, reverse Bulldog 2, that will work, but no, Agony reverses it on level 2 into the turnbuckle. He is going to toss Murdoch into the turnbuckle this time, but it'll be a mistake because uh, Murdoch moves out of the way. Agony goes flying outside the ring. Uh, he's got an A rating now, so maybe not. It's a 7. The wrestler with the better ring rating wins the brawl. They're equal, um, but Murdoch will roll on level 3. Falling Neckbreaker 3, 2, Dazed 1. Uh, four knife edge chops, uh, power move. Uh, Agony has the power into the turnbuckle. No, he's going to roll up again. He made that mistake once. Uh, shoulder chop, uh, dazed one, Murdoch, uh, double hammer two, um, power move. It will work. Uh, hurt two, uh, clothesline two, agility, but Murdoch has the agility. He hits the Antillian ambush. Five, hurts two, throat toss two, one, dazed one, uh, slap to face one, dazed one, we're back up at the top, three, uh, reverse bulldog, an agility move, but uh, he has the agility, uh, five, hurts two, five, Murdoch power bomb three, one, hurts two, uh, Antillian ambush three, one, hurts two, uh, shoulder tackle two, four, hurts two, uh, body slam two, six, dazed one, slap to the face one, six, dazed one, um, slap to the face one, agony has had enough, he reverses it, tries to, it's a clothesline, it's an agility move, and the Atelian ambush is the answer, down three, agony gonna roll out of the ring, He's got an A rating, but the roll is a 9, so he's going to crawl helplessly back in. Murdoch follows up with the middle rope elbow, choice G. 
and Death Jump. Agony has a C rating. There it is. There's the, the 12 off the top. Uh, so the target 5 and the roll of 7. So he's able to get out of it. But Murdoch in control now. Again, Choice G again going up to the top. And this time rolls a 4. C4. Agony throws him off the top. And Agony will roll on level 3. There's the demonic power slam. 3. Add 1. Murdoch is down. 5. Demonic power slam. Add 1. 4. Hurts 2. 3. Into the ropes. Going to toss Murdoch into the ropes. He's got a B. Uh, the roll a 6. So we'll roll again on the chart. Another 6. Uh, rolling again. 5. Uh, and three is an eight. Uh, opponent rolls on level two offense. So Agony following it up with into the ropes again. Um, B8. Uh, so another level two for Agony. And he hits the backbreaker. Choice D. Again, can't go for that power rating because uh, he'd need a five or less. So he's going to go for agility. Needs an 11 or less. And he gets it. Murdoch rolls on level two defense, hurt two, uh, tries a clothesline, but Murdoch able to reverse it. Shoulder tackle two, six, dazed one, uh, brain buster choice D. So his power is a negative five. He would need a four or less, so he's certainly not going to do that. Going to do the agility. This will work on a 14 or less. Uh, I would say that it works. Uh, agony, four, hurt two. Uh, shoulder tackle two, dazed one, man oh man, knife edge chops two, it's a power move, agony, reverses it, uh, headbutt three, hurt two, uh, clothesline agility move, not going to work, four, uh, into the turnbuckle, agony has a B, but the roll is low, it's a two, uh, Murdoch crashes into the turnbuckle, agony rolls him up, the target eight, the roll of 10, Murdoch able to kick out Agony uh, with the demonic power slam. Three, add one, and that is going to be Murdoch's uh, finish right there. So the target 10, uh, and the roll is an eight. So Agony able to put Murdoch away there in our opening match. All right, it is time. For the main event, we've got Revolver versus Paganax. Revolver with a 4-1, Paganax with a 4-1 as well. So this should be an interesting match. This is your main event. Revolver will be red. Paganax is going to start things off uh, with the Lavalanche. And uh, Paganax has the power. Revolver has the agility. Uh, so that was a level two move, uh, and Revolver is going to reverse it on level two and hit a choice C. His agility is a zero, going to go for that, needs a seven or less, gets it. Uh, so Paganax, four, down three, Paganax is going to leave the ring. Uh, he's got an A, but it is an eight, so he crawls helplessly back in. Revolver uh, hits a running leg drop, three, five, hurts two. Uh, three, spinning neck breaker, choice B. Let's see, his turnbuckle is an A. He's gonna go, he's gonna go for the agility. He needs a two or less. And uh, gets, I've said two or less. Uh, it's gonna be on level two. Um, he needs, uh, sorry, he needed a um, eight or less and he rolled a two, which he got. So uh, Paganax is gonna roll on level two and reverse it on level one. And there's Heathen Chief Headbutts three. Six, hurts two, uh, five, molten chops, three, five, down three, revolver gonna leave the ring. He's got a B rating, rolls an eight, he's gonna crawl helplessly back in. Paganax uh, tosses him right back out of the ring again. And um, Paganax, or, uh, revolver has a B, rolls a six, the wrestler with the better ring rating, that's gonna be Paganax. He's going to roll on level three and again, just toss Revolver out of the ring. Uh, B5, um, Revolver has to roll his disqualification, which is a five. No DQ, Revolver will get to roll on level three. Four, big DDT on Paganax, hurt two. Uh, there's the Cobra Clutch, three. 
Um, now the target is going to be one, so he's going to be able to kick out there. But the roll was a four, so uh, not too far over that target. Uh, and Revolver follows it up. Um, not going to throw him out of the ring. Going to roll up instead. Choice C. Um, going to go for the the uh, agility move. So this will work on a seven or less. It does. Paganax in trouble. Hurt two, uh, Cobra Clutch three, and that's his pin again. Uh, the target two, Snake Eyes will end it, but it's another four. And Revolver follows it up with Hits the Mark three, add one, six, down three. There it is, the figure four leg lock. One, two, three, seven is the target, and the roll is a seven. Paganax taps out to Revolver and the figure four leg lock. Uh, well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this little, um, you know, kind of informal look through of the CWF cards. Um, somebody had asked me on in the Facebook group if I was starting a CWF fed, and I really kind of have my hands full with my Legends and my GWF fed, um, and I, I just really love focusing on those, so uh, probably not. Uh, but you never know when you may see a match or two uh, pop up here uh, on the channel. But uh, thank you so much for checking this out. Thank you to all the subscribers. Uh, thank you to uh, all the Patreon patrons. And thank you for watching this video. I will talk to you soon, everybody. Goodbye.